I want to show you how you might go about building an MLOps cycle using the Edge Impulse API. Edge Impulse is the world's leading embedded machine learning platform. It helps you build a full end-to-end -end machine learning pipeline to accomplish a variety of ML tasks, from regression to vibration and sound classification to object detection and predictive maintenance. You can import data from any sensor and deploy your model to nearly any device. You maintain control of the data and firmware the whole time. The Edge Impulse Studio is an online platform that handles everything including data collection from your embedded sensors, labeling the data, performing any pre-processing calculations, and training machine learning models. This end-to-end -end project is called an impulse. You can then test your impulse on live data with a connected sensor. After, the studio will guide you through the process of creating firmware or a library that will run your impulse on any number of platforms. This includes your pre-processing code, trained neural network, and any anomaly detection code you may have so that you can perform inference locally without any internet connection. As I mentioned, we'll be talking about ML Ops, which is short for Machine Learning Operations. This is kind of like Developer or Dev Ops, if you've heard of that, where we worry about not just developing a software project, but how do we version control it, how do we integrate multiple pieces that might come from different developers, and how do we deploy it to the end user customer, incorporate feedback, and continuously provide upgrades and fixes to the customer. ML Ops takes that idea and applies it to machine learning. Here we start with the planning phase, and this might be a generic machine learning pipeline that you might come across. We'll plan our project, figure out that indeed machine learning is the right tool for this application. We'll then prepare the data so that it can be ingested into your machine learning pipeline. From there, we'll train our model, but this includes any sort of pre-processing you might require, such as calculating the MEL frequency septal coefficients to go into your keyword spotting system. After that, you usually test your model to make sure it meets your needs, and then deploy it to your target. In TinyML, this could be a microcontroller or something like a Raspberry Pi. After you've deployed it to your end customer, you then often want to monitor to make sure that the machine learning application is running as intended or perhaps receiving any sort of user feedback. When we talk about machine learning operations, we usually talk about automating parts or all of this process, and this includes connecting this cycle so that when we get feedback from something that's been deployed in the field, we can automatically collect data from that device where the model has been deployed and then go through this whole cycle again. And the idea is to be able to automate this so that you can scale up your production to hundreds or thousands of devices that have been deployed and you can create unique machine learning models for each device in the field. There's no way you can do this by hand, so we have to turn to automation, automated scripts, and ML ops in general to make this happen. I'm gonna start with this demo project here, this motion anomaly detection. All it does is takes the accelerometer data, does some spectral analysis, and then does a very simple anomaly detection. All I'm really looking for here is pretend we have a baseline, right? Let's say a machine does this waving motion back and forth. All I'm looking for here is if the machine does something that is not in this motion. We will flag that as an anomaly, but in reality for this demo, what this machine learning model and what this project is is kind of irrelevant. I chose this to show that, okay, maybe we have one machine that does this and somebody buys your device and they put it on a machine that does a different motion, which means you need to create an automated way to re-baseline that project or that model on the device and hopefully do it in an automated way. So for example, somebody buys your device, they put it on a machine, and they push a button and it automatically calibrates to that environment into that particular machine. And you want to have a way to automate the process of collecting new data, sending that data to a project, say like Edge Impulse, to retrain your machine learning model and then push that model down to your device. And for this demo, I'm going to show a tiny, tiny, tiny sliver of what that process might look like just to get you started using the REST API to automate that process. So I'm just going to show you how to download the model once you have the model trained. And I will show you where to go to figure out how you might be able to, say, automate uploading data to your project 
retraining your model, rebuilding your model, and then pulling it, and then it's up to you to figure out a way to automatically do a push to your device, like an over-the-air update or something along those lines. As I mentioned, Edge Impulse has this API that allows you to control everything you see in studio can be controlled through this REST API, which means on a remote computer, you can just send these commands off and Edge Impulse will automatically do the things you tell it to. Your project will be retrained, gather new data, rebalance your data set, build the project, download the model, and what have you. So to get here, you will want to go to docs.edgeimpulse.com and at the upper right, you can see API reference. If you click on that, scroll down, and you will see Edge Impulse API. Feel free to read about it here, and here is all of the API commands you can use. So back in our project, you'll want to go to your dashboard, go to keys, and you will want to both copy your key as well as your project ID number. And you can find your project ID number up in the URL. The other place you can find it is if you go back to the dashboard, Scroll down, you'll see project info and you'll see your project ID. So this number should match the number you have in the URL. So copy down this number and then copy down your API key, which we will need here. So the way to do this is to double click on this and it will highlight the whole thing. Even though it shows dot, dot, dot here, there's more numbers and letters. So just double click, it highlights the whole thing and then right click copy or control C. There are a couple of ways to authenticate with your project when you want to send commands. And this is a security thing that you don't want anybody just having access to your project. So if you click on this Edge Impulse API page, scroll down. One way is to use the API key directly, which we have. The other way is you can get a JWT token and that allows you to do things as your user. Now, to do that, you first have to send it your API key and you have to send it your username and password, which is an example right here. Because we're using HTTPS, this is encrypted when you send it. However, if you try to automate things and you write this, say, in a script, your password is going to be sitting here in plain text. So because of that, I'm going to show you how to do things with the API key instead, because it's easy enough just to say, hey, get a new API key in your project. We will be looking at the deployment options. So let's go into here and let's look at an example. Let's figure out what our options for deployment includes. So we'll start with this curl option. Let's copy this and notice how this get request is structured. First of all, it is a get request and it's HTTPS. We have studio.edgeimpulse.com v1 for version one of our API, then API, then we'll have to give it the project ID. So that means we have to insert that number here and then we're gonna call the rest of this URL, which is deployment slash targets. And you can read about it in the docs about what these parameters mean and what the responses mean. So an easy way to do this is let's grab this curl example. And we are going to go to recbin.com slash curl where we can just paste in curl commands. As I mentioned before, we need to get our project ID. So go back to your project, copy that project number from the URL or your dashboard, paste this in where it says project ID. And then instead of xjwt token, we can actually do dash API key. And that's where we go get our API key from our project dashboard. And where it says replace key value, let's paste that in. So let's run this command. And sure enough, you can see the output here. These are the available deployment options for your particular project. And these can change over time as Edge Impulse supports more boards. So for example, if you want that basic C++ library that you can run on nearly any target, you have to specify the format as zip when we go do the download command later. And let's scroll down. I'll show you how to do it with Arduino because that's what we're gonna be using. And so we just use lowercase Arduino. And there are a number of other boards supported here. So feel free to scroll through these and look at all of your options that are available. This is all in JSON format. So any sort of JSON parser, you can actually look at all of this and use it to automate any sort of scripting to make sure that your target is say supported. From here, we'll go back to the docs. We'll go to guides. And let's go down to tutorials. And there's one here that says running jobs using the API. 
I will be using a portion of this to demonstrate how we can automate the downloading of your project built for Arduino. This is a great example for how you might write something in Python to automate the build process, wait for that build to finish, which is wait for job completion, and then actually download the model. And we're just going to be doing this part so I don't have to go through this whole thing for you, but you get an idea of where to start and then feel free to run this script in order to download it for your particular project. Note that this download portion assumes that your model has been built, which means that any features have been extracted, you've trained any models, and if you go to deployment, you've clicked Arduino and the build button at least once. Without having done that, your model isn't built, which is why you need to call this build model function first, which you can see consists of this URL that's jobs build on device model. This is the actual REST API function that will be called. But let's assume that's been done. As I mentioned, you can try running this whole thing on your own, but I'm going to bring up VS Code I've got a folder here where we're going to test our API. I'm going to call it API test.py. And we're going to use portions of that script just so you can get an idea of how we might work with a particular project. And I will paste stuff in in the interest of time. So we're going to import requests and the regular expressions package. Here are our settings. This is the project ID that we got from here. So this should match this one. And if we go to our dashboard, go to keys, we'll make sure to copy this and paste that in as a string. Remember we saw zip as one option, Arduino as another option. We're going to download the Arduino library as our deployment type. Next, we're going to construct a request. We're going to create a string, and this is the F string formatting that newer versions of Python use where I can put in different variables here that update. So project ID gets replaced with a string version of this. And notice this is calling deployment slash download. If we go to our API reference, and we're gonna go down to deployment and download, you can see that this is where I get this string from. And I'm gonna drop down this menu so you can see the different parameters that I have to feed it. And there's even a Python example here. So you can try it with curl, or you can try it with Python, and I'm gonna do it with Python. So we have to feed it the project ID. We also have to give it either the JWT token or our API key to authenticate, and so that it knows that we are indeed intending to communicate with the project and we're authorized to communicate with our project. And we have to give it an output format, which is zip, Arduino, your particular board of choice. And we can do a model type if you have different model types enabled in your project but we're going to leave this as default for now, whatever was set in the Keras block. So back to our script. We're next going to create our query string, which is a dictionary, where we say type is our deploy type. So type is set to type Arduino, which is just a string here. Next, we're going to set our headers that go along with this git request. So we have our X API key. So remember, you can use our JWT token here, but instead of generating a JWT token, I'm going to use our API key, and that comes from this string here. And then we're going to set our accept and content type to JSON. Then I'm going to perform the actual get request using the requests package that we imported up here. All that's going to do is perform an HTTP get. It's going to provide the URL that we constructed here. It's going to set our headers that we defined here and it's gonna set additional parameters using the query string we put here. Our file should come in response.content. So part of this response contains this content that we will just create as our binary file and we will write that to an actual file on our operating system. Next, we're gonna parse out our file name from the header. So we're gonna look for this content disposition key that's in our headers and we're gonna save that. Then we're gonna use a regular expression to look for this string, this file name backslash star question mark equals some other stuff and we're going to get whatever comes after that and then anytime we see a single quote we're going to just remove that single quote we're going to replace it with nothing note that find all returns an array so we're just going to take the first element of that array which should just be one string and that should give us our file name 
Finally, we're going to open the file with the file name that we constructed here. We're going to do that as F, and then we're going to write to that file this binary content that we got as part of our response. And we'll just print a message to the console saying that we saved our file. From here, let's save this. And let's bring up a terminal. Make sure we are in the correct directory. And I'm going to call python api test.py, the thing we just wrote. That's going to communicate with the Edge Impulse servers, send it the command, and download our zip file. And here you go. Here's the file name, EI Motion Anomaly Detection Arduino 103.zip. Let's bring up a file browser so you can see what happened here. We'll go to Projects, Edge Impulse, API Test. Sure enough, there's my zip file. And if I open this, you can see it's all of the contents that you would find in an Arduino library. So here's the source file. This includes the model that we trained, which is just that really basic anomaly detection. And it also has the examples that come with it as part of the Edge Impulse Arduino library. From here, you could use something like the Arduino CLI to automate the process of compiling this and sending your program with this library to an Arduino board, or maybe you want to use the C++ library or the pre-compiled firmware and find ways to do something like an over-the-air update. But I hope this gives you insights into how you might begin automating the process for completing that MLOps loop using Edge Impulse.